Ah uh, yes, Tally. We have not talked to Tally very much. Your ship's amazing, Shepard. I've never seen a drive core like this before. I can't believe you were able to fit it into a ship this small. I'm starting to understand why you humans have been so successful. I had no idea Alliance vessels were so advanced. The Normandy's a prototype. Cutting-edge technology. A month ago, I was patching a makeshift fuel line into a converted tug ship in the flotilla. Now, I'm sitting on board one of the most advanced vessels in Citadel space. I have to thank you again for bringing me along. Traveling on a vessel like this is a dream come true for me. I had no idea you found ship technology so interesting. It comes with being a Quarian. The migrant fleet is the key to the survival of my people. Ships are our most valuable resource. But we don't have anything like this. We make do with cast-offs and second-hand equipment. We just try to keep them running for as long as we can. Some of the fleet's larger vessels date all the way back to our original flight from the Geth. I can't believe your fleet's still using ships that are three centuries old. They're constantly being repaired, modified, and refitted. They aren't pretty, but they work. Mostly. We've tried to make ourselves as independent as possible on the flotilla. Grow our own food, mine, and process our own fuel. But some things we just can't make on our own. A patch to maintain the hull integrity requires raw materials we just don't have. That's why our pilgrimages are so important. Tell me about your people. Our lives aren't easy. Resources are scarce, and we are constantly on the move. Everything we do must in some way contribute to the continuation of the migrant fleet. There are 17 million Quarians in the flotilla, and each of us relies on the others for survival. The bonds among my people are strong. Unfortunately, we have had to surrender many of the freedoms and civil liberties other species take for granted. What kind of freedoms? Well, it's illegal for parents to have more than one child. If our population grows too much, it would strain our resources to their breaking point. Of course, we also can't allow our numbers to become too few. If our population is in decline, the rule against single births is temporarily repealed. In extreme cases of population decline, incentives are even offered to encourage multiple births. Though the Conclave hasn't had to take such measures in nearly a century. That's your government? The Conclave is our civilian branch of government. Each ship can elect a representative to serve on the Conclave and make decisions that affect the fleet as a whole. On matters that affect an individual ship, however, the captain has the final say. It's a tradition that dates back to the early days, when the fleet was governed by martial law. Fortunately, most captains nowadays are smart enough to have an elected council from their crew to give them advice and guidance. But they don't have to, they could just be a tyrant. So the ultimate power rests with elected officials. In practice, the Conclave and the respective council for each ship tend to set the rules that govern our daily lives. But in theory, we are still under military jurisdiction. The five top-ranking military officials in the fleet serve on the Admiralty Board. These five have the power to overrule any decision by the Conclave in case of emergency. To do so requires unanimous agreement among the Admiralty. And they can only do this once. After that, the entire board must resign their posts. It's a safeguard that served us well. In nearly three centuries, the Admiralty Board has only overruled the Conclave four times. I'd be interested to know what those four times were. But, uh, yeah, so the Quarians created the Geth, so I'm sure she knows a lot more about them. I want to know more about the Geth. I doubt I can tell you anything you don't already know. It's been almost three centuries since they drove my people into exile. All I know is the story of their origins. What they were when we created them, and how they turned on us. Interesting. The Geth were originally created to serve as an automated manual labor force. Initially, their intelligence was as limited as any VI. 
Over time, we made small modifications to their programming to allow them to perform more varied and complex tasks, bringing them closer and closer to true AI status. How come the Council didn't step in and stop you? This wasn't true AI research. We may have been skirting the bounds of the law, but we never did anything that was actually illegal. The changes were so insignificant, so gradual, that we were able to control them. Or so we thought. But one thing we underestimated was the power of the neural network. A million geth thinking simultaneously created an inherently unstable matrix. So, the geth share brain power? Many of the Geth's logic systems were designed to work in concert with other nearby Geth. Basically, the more of them you have in a group, the smarter they are. So there's some sort of group consciousness? No, nothing like that. They cannot share sensory data or information. Their programming cannot handle that much simultaneous input. Each Geth maintains an individual awareness and identity. The neural network only operates on a process-based level. It's basically the synthetic equivalent of a subconscious. But, when they're in close proximity, they can coordinate low-level functional processes, freeing up more capacity for original or independent thought. What made them rebel? As we built more and more Geth, their effective intelligence became more sophisticated, more abstract. One day, a Geth began to ask its Quarian Overseer questions about the nature of its existence. Am I alive? Why am I here? What is my purpose? As you can imagine, this caused a near panic among my people. I don't see what's so bad about those questions. The Geth were created to engage in mundane, repetitive, or dangerous manual labor. That's fine for machines, but it won't satisfy a sentient being for long. The Geth were showing signs of rudimentary self-awareness and independent thought. If the Geth were intelligent, then we were essentially using them as slaves. It was inevitable the newly sentient Geth would rebel against their situation. We knew they would rise up against us, so we acted first. A general order went out across all Quarian-controlled systems to permanently deactivate all Geth. The Geth responded to this order violently. You can't blame them for fighting for their survival. We had no other choice. The Geth were already on the verge of revolution. By acting quickly, we had a chance to end the war before it began. The hope was that most of the Geth would still be little more than machines, incapable of organized resistance. But they had progressed much further than anyone anticipated. The war was long and bloody. Millions upon millions of Quarians died at their hands. In the end, we were forced to flee our own homeworld. We feared the Geth would pursue us, but they never came beyond the Veil. Now, we drift through space, exiled, searching for a way to reclaim what was once ours. It's hard to feel sorry for you. Your ancestors tried to wipe out another species. We made a mistake when we created the Geth in the first place. But we did not make a mistake when we went to war against them. If we had not acted, they would have wiped us out. They're a synthetic life form. They have no use for organics. None. Why do you think they cut themselves off from the rest of the galaxy? Why do you think they've killed every organic being who's ever tried to contact them? They didn't kill Saren. What does that tell you? The Geth are not innocent victims in all this. They're the enemy. They want to destroy us. Not just the Quarians. All organic life. That's why they've joined up with Saren. And that's why we have to stop him. I want to know more about the pilgrimage. When my people reach maturity, we leave our birth ships and seek acceptance with a new crew. It's necessary to maintain genetic diversity among the fleet. But no ship wants to accept someone who will be a burden on them. So, to prove our worth, we embark on a pilgrimage. We set out alone, leaving the flotilla and our families behind us. 
we only return once we have found something of value we can bring back to the fleet. This is presented as a gift to the captain of the respective ship we wish to join. If the gift is accepted, we are welcomed into the crew. Can a captain choose to reject the gift? That doesn't happen often. Most captains are eager to increase the size of their crew. It increases their own standing in our society. Even when a gift is not particularly valuable, the captain usually accepts it out of a sense of tradition. However, there is a stigma to presenting a substandard gift. It's not the best way to make a good impression on a new community. Most pilgrims don't return until they find something worthwhile. I can't believe they just send you off alone. It's not like they just cast us out. Before we leave, we are given lessons in how to survive outside the flotilla, and given gifts to help us on our journey. We also receive implants to fight off sickness and disease. Generations of living in an isolated and highly controlled environment have left our immune systems weaker than most. By the time we leave the fleet, we are well equipped for the pilgrimage. This is a rite of passage for all Quarians. If it were dangerous, our numbers would suffer. Virtually every pilgrimage ends with a triumphant return and the ritual presentation of the gift to one of the fleet's captains. So I was wondering, is if uh, they always return or not? I want to talk about something else. Like what? I should go. See you later. So the Geth are a lot like synths from Fallout 4. And yeah, I mean, I, I can I can certainly see the, if you have a bunch of Geth, a bunch of VIs who are not yet truly sentient, and there's a chance they might go sentient. And if they go sentient, they will in all likelihood rise up against you. It's not worth taking that risk, right? I can see the value in that. But once they are sentient, it's hard to argue against the fact that they defend themselves, right? Like that's kind of get that. Hey, Commander, you know that Quarian, Tally? She's been spending all her time down here asking me about our engines. I'll tell her to leave you alone. What? No, she's amazing. I wish my guys were half as smart as she is. Give her a month on board and she'll know more about our engines than I do. She's got a real knack for technology, that one. I can see why you wanted her to come along. I figured she'd be a real asset to the team. You got an eye for talent, Commander. But I'm guessing that's not why you came down here. Fill me in on the IES stealth systems. How does it work exactly? You can't hide a ship out in space. They emit too much heat and radiation. Too easy for sensors to pick them up. Unless you find a way to capture those emissions. So our stealth systems trap the energy we give off in storage sinks built into the ship itself. No emissions to give away our location. Eventually the sinks have to be vented. More than a few hours silent running and they overheat cook us inside our own hull. There's no way for anyone to detect us? A visual scan can still pick us up. Anyone looking out a window can see us plain as day. But you have to be pretty close to get an actual visual out in space. Most vessels rely on scanners. As long as the stealth systems are engaged, they can't see us. Not unless we accelerate to FTL speeds. Why doesn't it work with faster than light travel? Cranking up the FTL, blue shifts our emissions, pushes them into frequencies too high to capture in the sinks. As soon as we make the jump, it's like setting off a flare. Sensors can pick up our location whenever we enter or exit FTL flight, but for short-range missions, our stealth systems are amazing, and we've got the only one. I want to know more about the Normandy. She's the best ship I've ever served on, probably the fastest vessel ever designed. And she's the only one using the new Tantalus drive core. What's so special about the Tantalus Drive Corps? Proportionally, it's about twice the size of any other vessel. Not only are we faster, but we can run at FTL speeds longer before we have to discharge the core. Where else have you served, Adams? If you name a class of Alliance ship, I've probably served on it. Everything from dreadnoughts and carriers right down to frigates like the Normandy. My last assignment was on the Tokyo. Only a cruiser, but she was a good ship. Couldn't hold a candle to the Normandy, though. Carry on, Adams. Aye, aye, Commander. Okay, I think that's everyone. So now the question is, where do we go first? 
what do we want to do? I think our first order of business is probably to go and pick up our last crewmate, which is Liara, I think. And that's going to be... Over here, Liara's dig site, right. I don't know which one it is, though. Let me check the journal real quick. Artemis Tau. Okay, explore the uncharted worlds of the Artemis Tau cluster. So let's just explore over here. Like, it doesn't say exactly where. Just explore over here. All right, got it. Alright, well I guess we'll just start at Sparta and go from there. Okay, um... So we just do a survey and we get... Resources. Pretty sure in these... Asteroid belts you can find secrets sometimes. But you have to hover over them and scan them. I'm not going to read every single planet. Um, that's a bit too much for me. I'll read more about planets we're going to land on, but I don't really want to land. I don't want to really read a description for every single planet. If you'd like me to, Commander, I'm picking up a signal know. from the planet's surface. It looks like an automated distress beacon. Did we get lucky already? All right, we're going to land on this one, so I'll read it. Aetolus is a terrestrial planet with an atmosphere of carbon dioxide and nitrogen. Aetolus's surface is covered by wide deserts of silicate sand, with only a few areas of igneous rock highlands to break the abrasive, dust-choked wind. Aetolus's orbit is congested with debris thrown inwards by the gravity of the gas giant Ontomalka. Due to a high rate of meteor impacts, exploration is highly dangerous. It's negative one Celsius on the surface, so below freezing. Alrighty. So, who to take with us? I think it's gonna be Caden and Rex, probably. Is it Mako time? All I heard was people complaining about this thing for Mass Effect 1, so... I guess we'll find out. Okay, so this is us right here, and we have various places we can go to. I guess we'll just, uh... Why don't we go to the... non-distress signal first, because it's probably the end of where we're supposed to go. So we can jump in this thing, and we can do that. Can I climb this hill? Like, it's pretty steep. I guess we can. Yep, we got a rock formation over here, so it looks like a resource we can mine. Am 
I'm sorry if I'm annoying you, but this is like the best way to do it, I think. Uh, how do we get out of here? Oh, it's Q. Okay. Lithium deposit. Survey. I have to do the lock picking thing for this? Okay, well, easy enough. Cool. So that's done then, right? Then the actual thing we were going to is over here. That's not the right button. Perfect parking job. Oh no, electronic skill is too low. Okay, well, we can fix that. Caden, it's your time. Oh, I need squad. Squad, Caden. This is why we saved points, guys. In fact, uh, I'm just gonna pump like both of these as high as I can, I think. No reason not to just max this then, I guess. Like, we can't do anything else, so... Alright. Alright, Caden, you're the man. Now we can go through it. This is really hard, actually. This is quite a lot. Uh. Can I just, like, brute force it? Oh god! We oh my god, I made that. I can't believe it. Okay, we got a bunch of stuff. Cool. And next. This is gonna be a long ride unless I find stuff along the way. So if I don't find anything, I'll see you once we're there. Corpse? Got it. Solarian. ID tag, Captain Millen's identification tag, how it ended up here is impossible to know for sure. Huh. Um. Oh, there are several League of One medallions and a few ID tags scattered throughout these systems. They, the hunt must have been extensive and taken years. So we're looking for Solarian ID tags and League medallions. Okay, sure. Let's get moving. Hopefully they're all marked, because otherwise I'm, I'm not going to, like, thoroughly explore these plants that look like they're pretty much barren for the most part. Is that a turret? No. Oh! Still got hit there. Still getting hit. Actually really hurt. He's dead though, right? We got him. Excuse me? I think he's dead. We gotta repair though. Mako's almost busted. Okay, we're good. Moving out. Alliance soldier. Looks like they were lured here by the distress beacon. These are Admiral Kahoku's men. We need to tell oh. them what here.
Okay, looks like that's it. Okay, it's actually all, I think. So, yeah, I guess we're done. Okay, back we go. Not uh, Liara's spot, but still interesting. Let's keep going, then. Oh, never mind. That, I got excited. That was not the right thing, though. Nothing there. All right, so Sparta is a bus. Let's go clockwise around, then. Macedon? Macedon? Makadon? Not sure how you pronounce that. Start on the outside ring, I guess, and work our way in. Survey. Found some gas. Oh, oh, we found something. Metallic asteroid. Survey. Light metal. Titanium. Next one. Can't do anything. Matriarch's writing recovered. You were scanning the planet Poralon when a strange signal came from orbit. Navigator Presley determined the signal was from an ancient beacon. Your salvaging team brought the beacon aboard and found one of the Matriarch Delinaga's writings in its storage compartment. Okay. Matriarch being one of the ancient Masari people. Warning, level one pressure hazard. Sharzila has a, or Sharjila, has a very dense atmosphere of ammonia and oxygen. Its temperature surface is mainly composed of alumina with deposits of sulfur. Convoys in the system have recently logged a number of unregistered vessels operating nearby. Sharzila has an extensive silicon-based oxygen-breathing ecology. Heavily populated areas are covered with fine silica, silicon dioxide dust, the respiratory byproduct of the world's higher animal forms. High-speed surface winds, often laden with abrasive silica dust, present a hazard. In areas where the wind deposits a great deal of silica, footing can be treacherous. EVA is discouraged. Okay. Sounds like a fun place to go. Let's land. Debris, stronghold, and anomaly. Okay. Just go around counterclockwise. Here we are. I think I just like, ooh, uh, level three, e fusion explosive grenade upgrades. I think I just like spam the W button on those and it should work. That's honestly the best tactic. Find an open spot and spam W. That's like kind of cheesy, but it works. Oh, we have enemies up here. There are red dots, red triangles. Holy crap. Go around the side here to get some cover. Shields regen? Do our shields regen? They do, okay. It's gonna wait a second for the regen, then I'll go back in. It's not a big deal to repair it, but still. We 
getting lots of experience and uh, money from killing these guys, and the Mako makes it really easy. So that's something, I guess. Okay, let's see what's inside. Oh yeah, Rex, you have talent points. Oh, we got more stuff. Turian and a rank 3 shotgun. Is that shotgun an upgrade? Oh, yes it is. A very nice upgrade. I have stuff for this now too, right? Armor piercing rounds. We're dealing with synthetics right now, so I guess we go with the synthetic armor piercing stuff. Sounds good. And this has what in it? Anti-personnel. Let's swap it out for armor piercing. And this is also decent. Maybe we put the armor piercing in this too. Okay. All right, let's. Oops. Regroup. Gonna obviously be enemies in here, so. Oh, there's a whole bunch. What is it? What all are we fighting in here? There's someone right there. Right? Rex, you're right in my way. You also tossed a grenade right in front of me. It's not very helpful. Just die, Rex? Really? Already? Lost contact. Form up. No, um here you go. Do I have Adrenaline Burst yet? I don't think I do. Uh, okay. Barrier? Nope, not yet. Can I get you guys out of there? Uh, I don't have any... Uh, I could maybe use lift. Didn't work. It wasn't close enough. Charging up. Oh, we got one of them. What was that? I didn't even use that magic, Joe. Why did we use it automatically? Um, okay. Toss this guy. That kind of hurt. This guy is getting messed up, though. Um, gotta swap weapons. Freaking Krogans are tough. We're almost dead. All 
I think I can get this guy. Maybe not. That's that went way behind him. That's not what I want. I want to get on this guy. It's hard to target the stuff. Yeah, like if they're around cover, you can't really do it. Should have waited till they did that. Hmm, does warp not do anything against their shields? Oh god, I'm almost dead. Go, go, go. Try that and no, not that. Do it like this. Hit this actual guy up beside him. There we go. You're dead. Form up. You must die. You guys are shooting at me. I know they're behind here, but you're shooting kind of at me. It's uh, you know, kind of disconcerting. Can I please use... There we go. That should take care of you. Then we do a little warp. Do a little throw. A little singularity action here. Maybe just, uh, try a throw over here. They, If they're moving, it doesn't hit them. It's really annoying, actually. Rex, you're not a very good window, man. Clear. For now, we're clear. Hammerhead rounds, this is like knock people back. There's no music in here at all. It's really... It's too quiet. That? Oh, there's a door here. Ooh, nice. Okay, so it was a hard fight, but we got some nice stuff. A bunch of nice stuff. Upgrades for everyone. Better armor. Why did my weapon come out? Put it away. Oh, that's why, because I hit shift. Okay, look, just put it away. Thank you. Got a whole bunch of stuff here, too. Okay, so Avenger, this is way better than what we have now. So, yes, we'll use that. I should have been using... Um, the anti-personnel rounds, these were not Geth, they were uh, human enemies, or not human, but, you know, organic enemies. Uh, this is not any good. This is not actually better, surprisingly. This is way better. So 
some better armor for us. It gives us no biotic protection, though. I don't know if I like that. Caden, uh, it's definitely an upgrade for you, though. Like, yours is pretty garbage. There's a lot of shields, though. How many shields do mine have? No, it's the same as my shields. Okay, yeah. Go ahead, use that. Rex, we can't... You're a Krogan. You can't use any of this stuff. You have a good armor already, though. Rifle, this is better than yours. Use that, Rex. And, um... Give you the anti-personnel round for that. This is actually better than yours, so sure. Better than yours, so sure. About the same. Okay. Happy with that. Those are very loud doors. Armor plating. Cool. It's a tricky one. I lied, it's easy. Nice. Armor piercing rounds, number three. Rank three. Discover evidence that the Asari leader, these slavers, and... The Asari leading these slavers and Nasana Dante Dantius, an important ambassador on the Citadel, are sisters. Oh, this is the, the woman that kept saying that she was too busy to talk to us. She returned to the Presidium and confront Nasana with this. Profiting off of slavery, how dare you, ambassador. Come on, please. This is okay. I've, I've okay. We can we can try it again. That one was rough. Okay. See, sometimes it's easy. Sometimes it's really hard. Recoil dampener. I guess that makes recoil better. I mean, what else would it do, right? Anything over here? Looks like no. Okay then, we're out of here. That was very profitable, though. Got some nice stuff, nice upgrades. Oh, medical kit. Yeah, we'll take that. It was a little sloppy, I'm not gonna lie, but we did okay. For this being insanity and all that, in our first, like, real run outside of the Citadel. Um... Is there more to do here? It still has a question, or a quest mark here. Hmm, I don't know. I don't think we left anything behind in there. The other spots, like, they become X's normally whenever we're done. I guess we'll see what this one does. Once we get there. Another rock deposit. Can I get out here? Yeah, we can. Let's lock pick it, because that's how it works in this game. We got some thorium. This is not going to end well. Okay, there we go. A crate. Oh, another assault rifle and some heavy Krogan armor. Rex, can you use that? Buddy by pal, it's actually worse than yours. No, that's, that's not it. Uh, Krogan. Wonder why he can't use this. Is his current armor not heavy? It's medium, so he has to have... He has to invest more points to get heavy armor. I see. Well, can we do that? 
They're gonna be our tank. Combat armor. Unlocks fitness. Equip heavy armor. Okay, yeah, sure. You got 19 points. I mean... You're not really... You're not useful to us if you're dead, right? So... Should use that automatically whenever he's taking damage, right? So he just doesn't take any damage then. So he's going to be super tanky then. And then he's a little couple more points to open up um, throw. So yeah, we'll get that too. Then you can get throw. Assault rifles maybe. So you can do a whole bunch of range damage. Okay. And then, uh, yeah, we'll just keep doing that. Just max out assault rifles for now. It's good. Okay, and um, I'm just going to max out this whenever I can, and then I guess we go with barrier so we can unlock stasis for even more crowd control. Shepherd, um, we got all the basics now, I guess we'll have charm, and keep pumping up specter training for damage and duration of all powers and attacks and health and act it's, this is the best one like it's just a generic overall really good boost okay it works for me and this is still not the thing there's still something over here can I actually move these around huh I did not realize that A sorry capsule. Matriarch writings recovered. It's not clear who lived here, but it appears to have been abandoned for some time. The container in the tent held, among other things, one of Matriarch Dilinaga's writings. Okay. Oh, look, we're, we're actually taking hazard damage. I guess we take damage, or maybe we just die if we're out of the Mako too long. Interesting. Okay, well, I think we're done. For this planet, so... See ya, Shargila. We're going home. That's it for Macedon. Macedon. Macedon? Whatever it's called. Athens. Let's try Athens. Okay. Whoa. That was a bit much. All right. Pharos. Train insignia. Okay. Back out we go. deposit. Thank you. Nothing there. More gas. And nothing. Okay, well I guess there's bound to be a couple systems that have like pretty much nothing in them. Getting lots of gas out here, man. Nothing. Nothing. Also nothing. Therum is a distant but rich industrial world claimed by the Human Systems Alliance. Its plentiful heavy metals have fueled the recent manufacturing boom on Earth. Core samples rich with the fossils of simple silicon-based organics indicate Therum was more habitable in the past than it is at present. Perhaps this explains the many Prothean ruins dying the surface. 
most of which have been looted by mining corporations. There was a colony found here in 2167, population of 34,000. Huh. Lots of Prothean ruins, you say. Could this be where Liar is at? So this one is actually linear. The other ones were just like a big square. This one is fully linear. So I'm going to assume that- Commander, I'm picking up some strange readings. Really strange, like off the damn charts. It looks like it's coming from an underground complex a few clicks away from the drop zone. This has got to be where Liari is, right? Could be a side mission, I guess, but I don't think it is. Okay, so we can't go into these, just checking. I'm assuming we'll we'll see stuff on the mini-map if there's an actual spot we can go into. Otherwise, it's going to be nothing crazy. That is a Geth ship, for sure. Not sure if jumping actually helps, so I'm gonna keep trying it. So there's some big boys over here. Some very big red diamonds on the map over here. That was saved just in case. Only a fool punched the map back in the mountain. We should sneak around and pull his tail. Ah. Hey, level up, nice. By sneaking around, you mean doing this, okay. There's an enemy all the way up there. Whoa. Hey, pardon me. Can I go up here? Maybe not. Maybe not right now. Might be a bad idea. There's someone up there, though. There's a red dot up there. I want to see who it is. What's up there? I saw a structure, too. Oh, God, Mako. You can do it. Someone around here? There's someone past this gate. I want to check out what's back in that area, though. I didn't get to look, really. Can I go up here? You need to turn back, Commander. You're going beyond the range of the operational area. But there's an enemy up here. I want to kill him. Fine. These guys are no fun.
chemical rounds. We're fighting Geth right now. Guess that means we go with the armor piercing rounds. What do I want for this thing? Heat sink, recoil dampener, weapon stability. Uh, for now I'll go with the heat sink so I can fire it longer, I guess. Already has armor piercing in it. Okay, it works for me. There's the gate control. That's how we open up the gate. I don't know what point that really serves for us. Oh, uh, hello. Um, pardon me. Hello, Mr. Rocket Trooper. It's kind of scary, not gonna lie. Take him out. Okay, he's dead. But yeah, again, like, I don't really know what purpose that's going to serve us, but okay. There is some loot back here. Bunch of good stuff. Hurricane 4, huh? It's a Mark 4... Thing. I should have checked what it was. It's a shotgun. Uh, it's less damage than mine. It's kind of just worse, actually, in general. I guess we just stick with this for now. Probably a second gatehouse over here. Controls for opening it up. There is one more enemy over there too. Nothing here? I went all that way for nothing? How dare they? Shepard, you gotta do some more cardio, my man. You, like, run out of, of, of uh, endurance, like, instantly. You're just like, oh, I'm done. I ran 20 feet, I'm done. Let's do a shock, do a throw, do a warp. Yeah, I think you're dead, buddy. On we go. I'll stick with my assault rifle for now, but the shotgun's a good backup to a weapon now. It's pretty good. Once I get the training to pump those numbers up more, it'll be even better. Yeah, I never did kill the random person that's up on the hill there, but whatever, I guess I can't. It is what it is, folks. It is what it is. Just run him over, it's hilarious. That's one way to do it.
We're taking hits, but we're not taking very much damage. So I guess it's okay. Nothing too difficult. Checking for any loot around here. I don't see anything. I both love and kind of hate the Mako because it's like, well, I don't hate the Mako. What I hate is driving over mountains. It's really annoying. I actually love the Mako because it actually gets over the mountains, which is surprising in, in and of itself. But it's also very, very powerful and gives us really easy experience. Any mission where we're out in the Mako a whole bunch is going to be a whole bunch of easy um, XP. So... I like it for that. Oh, uh, nothing here, right? I don't see any loot or anything around here. More tunnels. I missed that shot. Terrible. Just terrible, Wanderer. Just awful. We're jammed. We can't go through here. We gotta get out on foot, okay? Alrighty. Here the real challenge begins. 